Hello once again guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. So what we're gonna be talking about in this video today is why $100,000, $100,000 salary is what I call being broke. Now I know a lot of people are going to be seriously questioning my sanity after I say that, but I wanna show you guys with actual numbers why earning $100,000 per year is not really much money at all based on the average expenses people have in their lives. Now, I just want to preface this by saying I am in no way, you know, putting down anybody who makes less than 100000 and it really doesn't matter how much money you're making. What matters at the end of the day is the kind of expenses you have in your life, and I've known people before that made, you know, $40,000 per year, and they had, you know, extra money every single month. I've also known people who made six figures, and they were paycheck to paycheck. So it has absolutely nothing to do with how much money you're making and everything to do with how you're managing your money. But what we're gonna be doing here is going over the average budget for somebody earning $100,000 per year based on the average expenses and seeing if this really is a lot of money. Now for me, I always learned when I was a kid that you know earning $100,000 per year meant that you were rich and I always thought that it meant you were driving you know uh, Mercedes Benz, you lived in the nicest houses and I want to show you guys why that just is not the case. So first of all with that $100,000 salary right off the bat you're going to pay taxes. So I did these numbers here based on living in New York which is where I live and so right off the bat you pay 28.6% in taxes meaning that your take-home pay is $71,400 or $5,950 per month. So that right here is going to be your budget of $5,950 per month. So now let's go ahead and talk about what are the major expenses that you're going to incur right off the bat. Well, first of all, you have to have somewhere to live and the average mortgage out there for somebody who owns their home right now is about $1,030 per month and that includes both you know, your taxes as well as your monthly insurance payments for homeowners insurance. So that right there is the biggest expense for most people. Next, we have car payment. The average car payment right now, $530. After that, health insurance. A lot of people don't think of this one, but this can be a very costly monthly expense. And the average health insurance premium for a single person on a health insurance plan is $440 per month, which is what you are paying in towards your health insurance. Next, let's talk about retirement contribution. Hopefully you're doing this if you're making six figures or any amount of money, but let's say on average you're putting away $100 per week and we're gonna say that's a $400 retirement contribution. Now, yes, you may be putting away you know, pre-tax income, but let's say it's ultimately costing you $100 of your post-tax dollars every single week out of your paycheck going into your retirement. And then finally, let's talk about student loan debt. The average student loan payment per month is $390. And if you're making a salary of $100,000, we're going to assume that you have some kind of student loan debt in order to be making that amount of money. So after you pay all of these monthly expenses that you ultimately have very little control over, how much money do you have left? So out of that $5,950, you now have $3,160 left over for all of your other expenses. So the next biggest expense for most people is your groceries. Now this number varies based on whether or not you're buying name brand groceries, are you buying organic produce? Personally, you know, I buy pretty high quality food and so for me it's usually around $500 per month in groceries, but for some people that might be a slightly different number. Next up, let's talk about cable and Wi-Fi, about $150 per month for most people, $200 per month on gas. You also have to factor in your car insurance cost for that $530 car payment that you have for that new vehicle. The average car insurance payment right now is $120 per month for that insurance premium. Beyond that, you have your utility bill for your gas and electricity figured for a house, you know, since you have a mortgage, about $250 per month. And then you have a cell phone bill. I'm putting that at 150 because most people these days have some kind of phone that they're paying off on top of their cell phone bill. So we're gonna say that's $150 per month. And then let's say you're putting $100 per week into savings to go towards maybe your next car or any kind of unforeseen medical expenses or maybe your house is gonna need a new roof someday or a new furnace. So let's say $100 a week going into savings 
and then $100 per week going towards your date night. So maybe you go out to dinner and you go out to the movies or you just spend this money on general entertainment. We're calling that $100 per week or $400 per month. So after all of these expenses, how much money are you left with? Well, you're going to have $990 per month left over out of that initial $3,160. Now notice what we don't have on here. We don't have a gym membership. We don't have Netflix. We don't have Spotify. We don't have all of these other monthly recurring expenses that people often take on and they could also be subtracting from your monthly surplus. And then the final item we're going to include on here is taking just one vacation per year. Now, what is the cost of a vacation? It's all relative to where you go. Um, I have found that on average for a one week vacation, if you're gonna go anywhere worthwhile, it's gonna cost you around $3,000 between your airfare, as well as food and dining, your hotel, and then any kind of excursions. So let's say you wanna take one vacation per year at $3,000. Well, if you budget that out per month, that is $250 per month going towards your vacation fund. So ultimately, how much money does that leave you with? Well, you're going to be left with just $740 per month or $185 per week. And it was really amazing to me going through these numbers just how fast you blow through $100,000 per year salary. And when I think of rich, or somebody who is you know, wealthy, I don't think of the average lifestyle here because literally what we're looking at is the average house, the average car. You know, Everything here is average, not the above average lifestyle. And that is why I believe $100,000 is the new broke. Now, am I saying this to put people down and make you feel bad for your salary? Obviously not. I'm simply pointing this out because when I was younger, my goal was always to make $100,000 and then I ultimately ended up in a job that would have allowed me to make this amount of money, but I was able to see that it really wasn't a good goal in the beginning and it wasn't a lot of money because of how easily you burn through a $100,000 salary. And again, I just wanna point out there are so many other random expenses that are being left out here entirely. Let's talk about clothing or any kind of repairs for your house, or like I said, Netflix, Spotify, uh, gym membership, CrossFit membership, so many of these other random things, that $740 per month is gonna disappear pretty quickly. And it's just amazing to me, you know, how quick you go through a $100,000 salary. So my point of making this video is to set the bar a little bit higher in terms of your goals for yourself, in terms of your earnings, because I always set that goal for myself of making 100,000, but when you actually look at the numbers, that is not a lot of money. Uh, but anyways, guys, let me hear what you guys think in the comment section below. I think this is kind of a controversial topic, saying that you know six figures, $100,000 is the new broke. I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next one.